All right, so we just finished our users group meeting, which is called AI World. Um, I think last year maybe was the first year we, we did this sort of drone picture. Um, we did it again this year. Um, it was probably my favorite AI world that we've had. I've been, uh, I guess it was my 14th, um, 13th or 14th. And so really, really great event. Um, and this is just a picture in the courtyard uh, where Hector, uh, our support manager, uh, likes a drone and camera. So there's some pictures of what, what happened. Uh, you know, we were at the AT&T Center again. Uh, the field trip went really well. Rain cooperated incredibly all week. It said it was going to be raining. And then thankfully, literally just as we were finishing the, the hands-on training, um, uh, it started raining and people were able to, to take off. So that was great. Uh, many of you know Clay Brelsford, um, a longtime president of Bass Engineering and now part of uh, the company, now part of Mesa Products. Um, he is retiring in December, so we had the privilege of asking him to do a keynote presentation, which everybody loved, and um, we also gave him a golden Allegro. So if you don't know the history behind that, it shouldn't really be me standing there. It should be Steve Hamlin. Steve started this years ago when we had longtime customers essentially retire. I think that's the fourth, maybe fifth, golden Allegro. Um, the gentleman on the left is the uh, uh, CEO of Juniper Systems, who we've worked with for about 20 years uh, with their handhelds. So, um, and then we had uh, a keynote, um, let's see everybody's face, with Jim and James. Um, and that was really, really well received about kind of taking control of your career and 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 leaning in and um and they did a podcast from um from the the user conference as well uh which was really fun because they would pull in uh yeah there we go uh, upper right hand corner they would pull in various customers and ask them questions and insights and then post um so that center picture uh that's andrew worcester attempting to look like a product model he's doing an outstanding job that's the um, that's the interruptible bond I was talking about. So you can see at the top is that same remote monitor that sits on top of the test head. And then the thing in his left hand at the bottom, that's a, 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 a new solid state relay intended for that. Um, and some fun pictures. We had, a, we had a really, really good time. It was um, one of the things that was really neat is we had a lot of our regular folks, uh, I say regular folks, people who have come for many years and we always love seeing them. And then we had almost 44, I think, about 44 uh, first-time attendees, which is awesome. Uh, it was really, really fun. It was a great week. Um, is there anything that I should add that I haven't from any of the AI folks on the line? No? All right. Well, um, great. Well, with that being said, I'm going to – it's like I timed it. And I, of course, didn't. That's, um, but it's 9.09, .09, so that's perfect. So, Mike, I'm going to hand it over to you. Mike has been with AI, I think, for 25 plus years, maybe. And um, he has been an expert in all things remote monitoring for a very, very long time. And uh, he remains that expert. So we asked him to come and do a little bit of technical training on setting up uh, Bullhorn Web for your remote monitoring units. Mike. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the November 23 uh, virtual brew. And today we're going to talk about Bullhorn Web Alerts. But before I can get started, I always have to start with something to think about. Uh, did you know insurance companies are now warning campers that if their tent gets stolen in the night, they're not going to be covered? I know it's that's pretty bad, but at being virtual, I don't have anybody to throw tomatoes. Well, if, so. if you didn't make it to AI World, all I'll say is that joke was better than <laughs> his opening joke during one of his sessions. So um, keep them coming, though. Bad jokes are fun, and that's a good bad joke. All right. So today we're going to talk about what are alerts. We're going to talk about contact groups and setting up alerts. All right, so what are alerts? Well, alerts are notifications that we send out from the website after 
a unit in the field, a remote monitor is called in to the website. Now, whenever those units call into the website, we look at that data and we look at the alerts that are set up for it and determine are there any alerts that have been triggered? And if so, we send out notifications if there's contact set up and that way our customers can know that some event has happened with the remote monitor on their asset. So first thing to do is to log into Bullhorn Web at, at our login page. I've got the login uh, address there in the bottom left hand or right hand corner. After you get logged in, you're gonna go up to the top of the screen and go to admin. And yes, this is an admin function for setting up contact groups, but I suggest that everyone gets set up in a contact group. After you have selected contact groups, it'll bring you to our contact group site. You're going to want to click on add and that'll bring up this box here in the middle and you can name your contact group anything you want. You can name it as I did here, just your division, it can be your name, it can be anything that you'll recognize as your group. I've seen a lot of different things out there and it is up to you. This is not something we, we mandate it has to be set up a certain way, but you just need to set up it at your group name. After you've got your group name set up, you're gonna add contacts to that group. And in this case, uh, example, I've used my name, the contact type is email, and then the contact is my email address, then I'm gonna click add, and that will add my email address to the contact group. I've also added in this example, a text message. You can repeat this and add as many users as you want. It just doesn't have to be one user. It can be emails, text messages, voicemails. And for our most of our cathodic protection and examples, most people aren't going to use voicemails uh, to let them know that their rectifier is down because there's not many people want to get that call in the middle of the night saying that the rectifier has gone down. Email or text usually will work. All right. Now we'll want to go back to our all units page and to get to our all units page, all you have to do is click on Bullhorn Web in the upper left hand corner. And once you click on that, it brings you to the all units page where it'll have all your units listed. And then you'll want to go to the pencil of the unit you want to set up an alert for. And once you click on the pencil, it's going to take you to the unit admin page. There's a lot can be done on the unit admin page, but for today, we're just going to talk about alerts. After you click on alerts, it'll bring you to the alert screen. The alert screen is going to have a default alert set up for power fail on almost all of our units. It's not going to have any contact set up, but we'll talk about getting that set up for you in a few minutes. So what we'll want to do first is click on new alert. If that's in the upper right. Once you click on new alert, you'll get a screen similar to this. And you'll want to set up your alert name. It's good for this example for low amps. It's going to be a data alert. And then you're going to select a subject. And we're going to say low amps. We're going to keep that generic. The reason for that is if you have templates that you've used this unit as a, an example for, and you apply the template to other units, and if you name this like milepost 27, every time you apply that template, you got to go in and change the name. So keep it generic. There will always be the, the actual unit name going out with your alert, as so you'll know which unit it belongs to. You don't have to worry about any of the other things on the screen as it, the defaults work great for cathodic protection. Uh, you're not, not going to want to set up an acknowledgement. If you get a 
an alert in the middle of the night saying your rectifier is down. You don't want to have to go in and click uh, acknowledged on the website. You're going to check that email in the morning or whenever you get time. It's not usually that critical that you have to acknowledge it right away. All right, hit save when you're done on this screen. I, I know that sounds silly to that have to remind you to hit save, but yours truly was setting up this presentation and twice I forgot to hit save and had to go back and reset it up to continue getting my slide set up. So hit save. All right, after you've got the alert uh, name set up, you're gonna add a condition. And you, when you hit add condition, you'll get a screen like this pop up. And then you're going to select the data points that you want to get the alarm on. And in this case, I've got the analog channel one for rectifier amps. I set it to less than, and the trigger is two amps. And the detail I kept, uh, as generic, it just said low amps. Now I could set this up for a high amp or low amp. Uh, just keep in mind when you set it up for less than two amps, it's got to be less than two. It won't notify you if it's right at two amps. There is a, a, a drop down for the operator. You can say less than or equal to, but most of the time, it, most of our customers just use less than and then the trigger value. And don't and forget my, to, oh, yes, sir. Yeah, I should have said in the beginning, oh, perfect. Um, Matt Kelly, maybe, I think. oh no, he's, he's providing a link. If anybody has any questions at all, please stick them in the chat right now along the way. Uh, if, if you've been on Virtual Brews before, you know that's how we do it. It's love for you to do it along the way. I mean, of course, they're welcome afterwards because then we can follow up with you. But uh, you know, if you have any questions, or experiences doing what Mike's talking about, please, please share them. All right, we'll keep going from here. After you hit save for your conditions, now it's time to set up your alerts. You're gonna click on alert contacts and then in the lower right-hand corner, you can add your contact group where you've got your contact group that we showed you how to set up earlier. Once you get that in there, you're gonna hit the green button. You're not gonna have to, you're not gonna have to worry about broadcast or fall over or delay. That's more for cases where you've got critical alerts, where you got multiple contacts getting notified and somebody has got to get to the website and acknowledge it before it uh, sends off to the next person. And we want to make sure you're using these contact groups instead of the individual groups at the top. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is if you're set up and you've got um, 500 units you're responsible for and you've used just an individual contact from the top and the, tomorrow you win the lottery and you're gone, you want $10 million, $100 million, you just left. The next person comes along, doesn't wanna to have to go through and change each one of those alerts, Take delete the individual contact, and then have, add them in. And we'll show you more how that gets done later on. All right, once you've uh, hit the green dot, you'll see that the, contact name is in the list of contacts to get notified on this alert. All right, so what we wanna do next is hit back to alerts. And you can see now we have a low amps alarm set up plus our default power fail. And there's one other alert I wanna show you as it's, these are the common alerts that get set up by our customers. We're gonna hit new alert. And this time it's gonna be an activity alert. Uh, it's, I wanted to point out activity alert because it is important when you're setting up for not responding in eight days, 
14 days or however long you've got set up there for that you set it up for activity alert because it's not looking for data. It's actually looking for lack of activity on the website from a unit. And we've got this one set up for not reporting in eight days. Now, I know you're asking the question, well, my units are calling in every seven days. Should I set it up for not reporting in seven days? My answer to that is no, you don't want to do that. And the reason why is, let's say you've got a, a satellite unit that calls in every every week, every seven days, right at 7 a.m. perfectly, then all of a sudden it has trouble getting a signal for the satellites over and overhead at seven o'clock and it calls in at 725. Well, by 725, if you've got it set up for not responding in seven days, you'll have already got an alert saying your unit's not transmitting in. So give it one extra day to allow for any of those late calls. That's just going to happen. It's an, the way things happen with cell and with satellite. Occasionally, you're going to get a late packet. All right. After you've uh, got the, the alert name set up, you're going to hit alert condition. You're going to set less than one packet in eight days. You could also set up a, an alert for to notify you if it's over-reporting. You can say greater than five packets in two days. And that way you'll know if your units, for some reason, is going in and out of alarm too often and you need to get out there and see what's going on at your rectifier or whatever your asset may be. And once you've got that set up, don't forget to hit save. All right, now alert contacts. I'm going to show you something a little bit different on alert contacts than we did on the last uh, alert. We're going to click on add all alerts. Then we're going to set up the add contact group. And what this does is it adds this contact group to all of your alerts on this unit not all the units on your website just this one unit so if you forget one of them to add an alert or a contact group this will make sure it gets on there and for that low amps where we've already got this it's not going to add it twice it's gonna, the website sees oh i've already got this contact set up i'm not going to duplicate it so you'll only get one contact group in there All right, so back on our all units page uh, in the upper left, if you could, once again, if you click on bull web monitoring, it'll bring you back to this all units page. And what I wanted to show you here is that the amps are highlighted in yellow for this, this unit. And what that tells me immediately is that an alert has been triggered for this unit and it's under amps. It could be low amps, high amps, but in this case, it's pretty obvious it'd be low amps because we set it up for less than two amps. We can also see it's uh, got the red X that tells it that the unit's in alarm, but the yellow highlight tells us what it's in alarm for. And for the last packet uh, date, if that was highlighted, that would mean that the unit was triggered for not reporting in eight days, 14 days. All right, once again, highlighted in yellow is a quick check to tell you why, they're not why, but that your unit is in alarm. All right, and I told you earlier, you wanna make sure you use in contact groups rather than individual contacts because you can easily delete the contacts out of the group and click on add and add a new contact at any time. And that way your, your contact group is following your asset and you can change out um, the contacts. 
it doesn't necessarily have to mean that somebody left the company. It could be somebody who's on on leave for a period of time or just on uh, vacation for a couple of weeks and wants somebody to watch their uh, their assets and make sure nothing's going wrong out in the field. All you have to do is just click on add user contacts and that will um, be, allow you to add in, as many users as you want. All right, I also wanna point out if you click on Bullhorn Web and then click on help, it'll bring you to this um, help page and you can go to the training videos and see other videos on how things are get done on Bullhorn Web. It, we're always updating this, adding more content out here. So keep checking this out and you'll find that a lot of times instead of waiting on phone for support, you can find your answers right here under help.